We got to understand who we have been dealing with all of this time. Let's go to John, St. John 1 and 18. St. John 1 and 18. Remember, Moses talked to Jehovah. So he heard the voice of Jehovah. Let's go to John 1 and 18. No man have seen God at any time. No the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. No man has seen God at any time. What are we going to do with Moses? Did Moses talk to a God? Did Moses see a God? Well, Black Ice, I don't know about all that. I don't remember reading where Moses saw God. I do read about him talking to Jehovah. Well, we're going to get there, brothers and sisters. But before we get there, let's go here. Because you said, and I said, that I remember where Jehovah was communicating with Moses. Let's go to John 5 and 37. And the Father himself, which have sent me, have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. You have never heard the voice of the Father, Jesus his Father. The God in heaven. God the Father. Jesus said, you ain't never heard his voice or seen his face at any time. Well, what are we going to do with Moses? What are we going to do with him dealing with Jehovah? Wasn't Jehovah the God of Moses' day? Didn't we just read in the book of Exodus 6 and 3 that unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I appeared to them under the name God Almighty. But they didn't know me under the name of Jehovah. But you, Moses, going to know me under the name of Jehovah. What are we going to do with that? Well, Black Eyes, you still not convincing me that Moses saw God. Well, let's go to Exodus 24 and let's start at verse 1. Exodus 24 and verse 1. Let's see if Moses heard the voice of a God. And then we're going to see if he saw God. Let's go. Exodus 24 and 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. Moses, Nadab, Aaron, and Abihu, that's four, and seventy of the elders, that's seventy-four people. But he was giving Moses instructions. So Moses had to hear his voice. So Jesus said, no one has ever heard my father's voice or seen his or seen him at any time. Well, could it be, brothers and sisters, that Jehovah is not God the Father? Let's continue reading. Let's go to verse 9 through 11. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. Stop right there. And they did what, brother? They saw who? The God of Israel. They saw the God of Israel. So wait a minute. Either Jesus wasn't telling the truth, or he didn't know what he was talking about, or the God of Israel... It's not God the Father. Well, we're going to show you who the God of Israel is and who Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and all of the prophets dealt with, brothers and sisters, while they were alive in the flesh on this earth. Let's go ahead and continue, my brother. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the noble of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Stop right there. They saw God and did eat and did drink, brothers and sisters. So this teaches us that the God that Jehovah Witnesses call Jehovah is not the father, brothers and sisters. He is the son and 
the son in the New Testament, when he came through Mary, took on the name Jesus. But before Jesus, one of the names that he took on was the name Jehovah. And we can all so show you that before the name Jehovah, he took up under the name Melchizedek, brothers and sisters. Another lesson for another time. But I'm showing you that our Jehovah Witness, brothers and sisters, got it all wrong. Jehovah is the son of God. Also, Jesus is the son of God. But now we got to find out real quick. Turn your book back to John, the first chapter, brother messenger. And let's find out if Jesus was given the title God in this book. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was who? God. The word was God, brothers and sisters. So we know that the son is a God and his father is the God. So God, the father sent God, the son down to this earth to get the creation back in check. So he came to Moses under the name Jehovah, God, the son, and he dealt with Jehovah. Now, I know what you're going to say, Jehovah Witnesses. Well, what you going to do with Psalms 83 and 18? What you going to do with that, Black Eyes? If Jehovah ain't the Father, God the Father, then what you going to do with Psalms 83, 18? Well, let's find out what we're going to do with Psalms 83, 18. Read it to me, Brother Messenger. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, the most high over all the earth. I got you, Black Ice. I told you that Jehovah was the most high. Wait a minute. Where did it say Jehovah was the most high over? Read that last one. That Jehovah is the what? Read that part. He is from the most high over all the earth. Jehovah is the most high over all the earth only, brothers and sisters. Jehovah is not the most high in heaven because that's where the father is the most high at. But the father gave the son jurisdiction to be most high over the earth, brothers and sisters. So man has never dealt with the father. But we are looking forward to the eighth day, the day when we are no longer in our booths. In these earthly tabernacles, brothers and sisters, in this flesh and blood body, but when will this be? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, and let's start at verse 47. 1 Corinthians 15, and let's start at verse 47. The first man is of the earth. Earthly. That's, that's Adam. The second man is is the Lord from heaven. So the second man, brothers and sisters, is also considered to be the first of them that slept. Let's continue. As it is earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So we're going to bear the image of the heavenly brothers and sisters, but we got to wait until the resurrection, brothers and sisters, the resurrection. Continue, Brother Messenger, at verse 54. Corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So, the grave couldn't hold Jesus, brothers and sisters. Death couldn't hold Jesus, brothers and sisters. So if Jesus is the first of them that slept, that means that there are more that come after him. But there is a protocol that has to take place first, brothers and sisters. We're going to go to the book of Revelations, the 20th chapter. We're going to read one verse 
and show you what happens to death. Death has to be defeated before God the Father can come. Jesus has to complete his mission before God the Father can come. He has to be the cleanup man, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Revelations or clean up God. Let's go to Revelations 20 and 14. We're going to read that one verse. What happens to death, brother messenger? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So death and hell is defeated and thrown into the lake of fire. What does that tell you? That even during Jesus's thousand year reign, there's still going to be people that die during that thousand year reign, brothers and sisters. And then God is so good that it says that after Jesus thousand year reign, Satan is going to be loose for a little season. Why is it God? And this was my big question while I was still growing in my spirituality. If you have Satan already locked up in a bottomless pit, then why would you release him again, Father? Explain it to me. Brothers and sisters, God is so fair that there would be a thousand years when people don't know Satan. A thousand years without false religion, without false doctrine, without those things that Satan is responsible for. So in order for him, the father, to be fair to me, then he got to tempt you just like he tempted me. So when Jesus teaches for these thousand years, void of Satan, without Satan, he's going to lose Satan for a little season for Satan to come back and tempt the people that never knew him. God is fair, brothers and sisters. He got to give us the same opportunity that he give them and give them the same opportunity that he has given us. We can't say that we love God and won't be tested. So let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses nine and ten. Let's 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 read about this this world that that Jesus spoke about in Matthew, or I'm sorry, John three sixteen. That God so loved the world so much that he sent his son to die for it. What world did he love so much? Let's see if Jesus talked about it in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses nine and ten in the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus was so skilled that even when he taught us how to pray, he was teaching us in the prayer. He was teaching us prophecy in the prayer. Oh, we just said the prayer like it's just words. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we not even paying attention to the knowledge and wisdom of the words in the Lord's prayer. He's showing you the eighth day in the Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come. When is his kingdom coming? In the eighth day, brothers and sisters. When will his will be done on earth? In the eighth day, uh, brothers and sisters. It show you how skilled Jesus is. So let's go right up to the eighth day. The coming of God, the father, the God that no man has ever heard the voice of, that no man has ever seen before. Not even Moses, not even the prophets, no Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, only the son, brothers and sisters. And the angels, let's go ahead and read Revelations 21, one through four. Let's, we're going to close out with this, brothers and sisters. We're talking about the eighth day, the real Father's Day. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Let's stop right there. The reason why water is needed on this earth is because water provides the germ, the life germ, brothers and sisters, or the life element of flesh and blood. But remember, 
when there is no more flesh and blood, we don't need the type of food that we eat today, brothers and sisters. So everything on this earth needs water to have life. Vegetables, fruit, vegetation, animals, all those things, brothers and sisters. And those things were created for man in our flesh and blood form. So we're going to remove water, which means no more animals. No more vegetation, brothers and sisters, because we do not need those things to exist in our, what the rappers call, God bodies. Let's go ahead and continue at verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now you understand why Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because John saw it coming. He said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Didn't Jesus say, I go to prepare a place for you? But where I go, you cannot come? But where I am, you shall also be. Because he was going to prepare it up there and bring it down here so that you can be with him in his father's kingdom, brothers and sisters. And this was the world that God loved so much that he sent this son to die for it because you cannot access it except you go through the blood that Jesus shed and the life that he gave up and sacrificed for our sins in order to enter the house of God on the eighth day, which would be here on earth. But the question is, where's the father going to be? We know his house is going to be here, but where's the father going to be? Let's read where the father is going to be. He's going to be right here with us, all these men, brothers and sisters. He's going to be on this earth with men. Let's read it. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I'm not sending no more messengers for you. I'm not sending no more prophets for you. I'm not even sending my son to be in between you and I, because now... Since he has defeated that last enemy called death, I am ready and prepared to come down myself to be with you. And I'm bringing my kingdom and you're going to be my people and I'm going to be with you and be your God. So much goes for that old saying that we're going to go up to be with the Lord. I'm going up a yonder to be with my Lord, brothers and sisters. Those things were not biblical. That teaching was not biblical, brothers and sisters. So now we're in the eighth day with the father. Death is no more. And now since we have no more death, brothers and sisters. We don't have to feel these things anymore. Read these things that we no longer have to feel because there is no more death. Go ahead, my brother messenger. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Brothers and sisters, what we know to be life now will be no more in the Father's kingdom, will be no more in the eighth day. See, we need money in order to live. We need food in order to not to be hungry. We need water in order not to be thirsty, brothers and sisters. We need relationships to blend together in order to have children, brothers and sisters. Well, in the Father's kingdom, those things are no longer needed, brothers and sisters. Because in the Father's kingdom, you will no longer be man. In the Father's kingdom, you will be God, brothers and sisters. That's why Jesus said, you are all God's children of the Most High God. And the Bible tells us that we will be joint heirs with Christ, brothers and sisters. Happy Father's Day, the eighth day, the real Father's Day. 
Thank you so much for listening, brothers and sisters, to another edition of the Bible Show Truth Hour here on POET Radio. I am your host, Black Ice, along with our brother, Messenger, and we want you to share this video. And if you would like to be added to our text invite reminder list, which means that you will get a text right before we come on air to remind you that our program is now live. You can watch it on Facebook Live or you can call in, listen to it on your cell phone while you're driving in your car, in your earpiece, on your job while you're working, if you are allowed or permitted to do so. Or you can go on our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch these lessons as they are uploaded after they are done. But if you want to be added to our text reminder invite list, then text your name and the keyword truth hour to 312-719-7310. Again, text your name and the keywords truth hour to 312-719-7310. We pray that you were edified and that God was glorified on tonight's show. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Thank you so much, amen. YouTube. And to next week, YouTube, and those who are on Facebook Live, stay on because we're going to go to our phone lines.